about to give them what they want. I don't think they're ready for this, though. Beast mode. 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 All right, guys, get ready to go to the gym today. Late night workout. Just got done doing some clients and stuff like that. About to go train. Thought it would be a perfect opportunity to give y'all a video about upper chest. People ask me all the time about how to get a good upper chest, guys. You know, I don't know about you, but when I wear a nice tank top, I want my collarbone sticking out. I want some nice, thick, meaty pecs up here from the top to the bottom to the inner to the outer. So you got to hit those angles. So let's go ahead and talk about upper chest today before we do. Uh, GAF way, GAF stands for good as fuck, and I stand behind that name. We're doing chocolate peanut butter. Appreciate everybody going to tigerfitness.com and supporting me, all right? Going to some fresh fruits, going to some frozen cherries, and to answer some of you guys' questions, most, fr most frozen cherries come without the pits, all right? The pits are not good for you, actually. So don't be eating no cherry pits, all right? You already know. All oh, underdogs matter, guys. It is never over. I don't care how hopeless it looks. It ain't over unless you just straight up give up. Unless you just straight up fucking quit, it ain't over. All oh, underdogs matter. These are cheap, only $15, because I want to get the message out. I really believe in this message. All oh, underdogs matter. But you got to put yourself first. You got to get out here and put in that work. And you already know, pump chasers. About to go to the gym right now and chase that pump. I live for the pump, baby. That's why I got my own gym. I love pumping. All right, I'm going to put some of my wrist wraps on right here. Pumptitches.com for your wrist wraps. I plan on doing a nice restock in the fall. Some wrist wraps. Most likely some belts, too. We'll see what's up. For sure, some wrist wraps, guys. These are one thing we often overlook when training, man, is little, little joints like wrists, elbows, shoulders, knees. Man, these things do take a lot of wear and tear when you're constantly contracting your muscles. You know, contracting your muscles use a lot of mechanical tension. So keep that in mind too, man. But uh, I use wrist wraps on this, not only for wrist support, but on a Smith machine, you have to roll your wrist back. So this right here helps take a lot of that pressure off. Again, palmchasers.com, all right? So let me go ahead and show you the setup. Now keep this in mind. I'm showing you three of my favorite upper chest movements. By no means am I saying you should only do these movements or these are the best movements in the world. You know, it's gonna be person to person. I'm gonna show you these three movements that I like to do, and I'm gonna explain why. Now, the reason why I like doing the Smith Machine, and first and foremost, barbells and dumbbells are the granddaddy movements, they're free weights. You know, this is more so for advanced people like myself who uh, wanna get a little more stimulation on the muscles without using free weights. Let me show you why I use the Smith Machine. All right, now before I do, Let's go ahead and talk about setup. Now, as you see right here, it's too close to my chin, all right? So, I'm gonna go ahead and push the seat back a little bit. You know, I want it to be above my upper chest, all right? Placement matters when you're dealing with machines, all right? So, do it again. Shoulder width, roll back, come down, right there. I'm gonna come down a little more. See, that's with a Smith machine, guys. Do not get started and start going heavy until you get that position perfectly. And I know a lot of us, we like training with friends and stuff like that, but to be real with you, sometimes when you're dealing with certain machines, you might have to train alone because you have this shit set perfectly for you. But when your partner comes in, it might not be perfect for him and he's gonna have to adjust his seat. And to be real with you, every rep matters in bodybuilding. When I fuck with things like Smith machines, I like to really get the position just right, all right? So I can feel every single rep, all right? So here we go. Shoulders roll back, chest up. Shoulder width grip. Roll the wrist back. Let's go again, control the negative. That feels really good right there. And then I press up, again. Again. Feels good. Elbow drive. Elbow drive, elbow drive, all right, look at my elbows, notice they're not in here, notice they're not way out here, I got it just right. Now, 
I like to use Smith machine, guys, because you're able to load up the tension, load up the weight without having to worry about balance. All right, but there's pros and cons to this. You know, when it comes to shoulders, shoulders move in a rotary fashion. It moves in a rotational movement, right? The Smith machine is straight up and down. So what does that tell you? You have to discern. Once you get to a certain point, when your shoulders start to rotate a lot, stop right there. So I have to stop about right here. Like I said, shoulders move in a rotary fashion. They move in a rotational fashion. This is an up and down motion. So you don't want to go down too low. So I get to about right here. For every person is different. We all have different shoulder widths. We have different arm lifts, et cetera, et cetera. Different uh, mind muscle connection levels. You have to go down what's for you. Just go down to where you feel that stretch, stop, and you power it up with a good squeeze, all right? So let's go ahead and get two wheels on here. Keep in mind, it's been a while since I've done high volume training. So I'm gonna get two wheels and keep it here today. But I've been sometimes three wheels on this. I've been, there's been times where I put three wheels on here and I do four sets of six really heavy just to get some really heavy tension and stress on that upper chest. At the end of the day, guys, this is bodybuilding. Once you get a good mind-muscle connection, you really know how to utilize these machines and get the most bang for your buck. But like I said, when you're new, when you're new to the gym, try to stick to the free weights. You know, get a good mind-muscle connection, understand safety, understand how to control the negative. We'll talk about that more in the future. But right now, this is strictly about three good upper chest movements that I really like and I want to share with you guys, all right? And I wouldn't be a good trainer to you, I wouldn't be a good friend to you if I didn't share with you in form. I don't want to show you exercises and then you go to the gym and start doing it and fucking yourself up. So I want you to understand, this goes up and down. Shoulders move in a rotary fashion, so don't forget, find out where to stop. Let's go, man. Something light today, like I said, just not getting back to the high volume. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get nice out of this. But like I said, when you really want to load the weight up, this is a good exercise to use. Just make sure you don't go too low, all right? We're gonna go ahead and get about four sets of eight today. Let's get to it. Roll the shoulders back. Get my upper mid back to that bench for support, that chest up. Don't forget to roll the wrist back, all right? Up, roll the wrist back, and here we go. Control. Squeeze. See? Don't come down too low. See right here? I don't want to touch right here. There's too much rotation, all right? That's too much rotation right there. I can touch just fine, but that's really unnecessary, okay? Like I said, on the free weights, it's cool to touch your chest because on the free weights, you're rotating naturally. You're rotating your shoulders naturally. You're not getting a natural rotation on the Smith machine. Keep that in mind. So stop before you touch your chest, all right? Here we go again. Good to really squeeze those packs and not have to worry about no balancing, and you're really just pushing blood into that muscle, all right? So, here's my first movement. I got two more to show you. Stay tuned. So, this right here, I have to call this uh, incline bench fly pressing hybrid combination. So, I guess we can call it the incline bench uh, press fly hybrid. Now, it's not quite a press and it's not quite a fly, it's a little bit of both. Now, as you know, with free weight, uh, dumbbell flies is a really good stretch on the pec, but not an amazing contraction because as you come up against gravity, there's not a lot of tension right here, which is why cables are so powerful, but on the vice versa, on the flip side, you know, cables are a great contraction, but they're not really a great stretch because you're not going against the natural, you know, you're not, you're not, you're not resisting against gravity as you would with dumbbells. You know, it's, everything's set on a cable. You know, everything's set on a pulley. So, um, to get the best of both worlds, I've done a combination of both. All right, so let me go ahead and show you how I do this shit real quick. All right, check it out. Let me show you a fly. And as you know, with a fly, you kind of keep your arms slightly bent, not completely straight, not super bent, kind of in between to keep leverage. You just open up at the shoulder, stretch, and then you bring them everything in, all right? Stretch, and you breathe everything in. Stretch, and you bring everything in. Make sure you control your breathing, all right? And here's a press, all right? 
Same thing, all right? Pretty much the same thing. You come down though, but instead of coming out in the arc, you just press towards the ceiling, all right? You just press towards the ceiling. So this right here is a press. Press towards the ceiling, and this is a fly. You come up in the arc, all right? Now this is what I like to do. Uh, from time to time. You know, I mix things up. You know, I'm very creative in my training, all right? So uh, that way I don't get bored. This is the lifestyle. You're going to, me anyway, I'm working out to the day I die, so I got to keep my uh, workouts fun, interesting, and challenging, okay? So, like I said, mix things up. This is what I have to do from time to time. Mix a little bit of both. So, you come up, keep your palms facing each other, elbows bent. So you have your palms facing each other. But come down similar to how you would if you were pressing. Now if you're pressing, your palms are going to be pretty much facing away from you. And you're coming with your elbows down. Same thing, but palms facing each other. So palms facing each other, elbows coming down as I'm pressing. And as you see, I get a nice stretch in my chest, all right? I'm exaggerating on the way down. I'm not coming down narrow, but I'm not coming out way out here either. You got to fan your sweet spot. So I come down like I'm doing a press, stick that chest up, and I stretch. And then I come up and I press, but in an arc, like I'm flying almost, see? Bam! So I'm coming down and I'm pressing in an arc. So it's like a pressing fly combination. Nice and smooth, and you squeeze. 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 Squeeze, squeeze, all right? Also, I already know people are gonna ask me about the incline height. I suggest 30 to 45 degrees. Uh, me personally, guys, I like a 45 degree angle for like pressing movements, for like barbell pressing, uh, dumbbell pressing, but for like incline dumbbell flies or the dumbbell fly hybrid press I just showed you, I like a, a 30 degree, you know what I'm saying? So anywhere between 30 to 45 degrees. I've heard some people say lower, but um, you know, try that too. You know, try 15 to 45. But I suggest from what I've seen from a lot of my clients and from what I've seen from others, 30 to 45 degrees seem to be the sweet spot. So just try all three. Try 15 and work your way up to 45. But, but keep in mind, guys, it's all about angles. The whole purpose of the incline bench is to get your upper chest pointed towards the ceiling. That way you can recruit the tension. You know, notice on the flat bench, you hit the lower pecs because your, you know, mid chest is pretty much right in line with the ceiling. Notice with the decline bench, the lower part of your chest is now facing towards the ceiling. You know, wherever you're facing towards the ceiling is where the tension is gonna come. Notice on the shoulder press, we're sitting more upright because now the shoulders are faced toward the ceiling. So keep that in mind as well. We have these angles on the bench for a reason. Just find your sweet, just find your sweet spot. We are all built different. This is a one-on-one -on -one trial and error type of journey. You know, we got that works for you. Now, I already shown this exercise, guys. If you want a little more detail on this, uh, I got the link to this video at the very bottom of the description. This is called the Crucifix Cable Crossover. All right? So, like I said, you want a little more detail, just go ahead and uh, click that video. But pretty much, have your arms in the T shape, slight bend, and make sure you're controlling the positive and the negative. Don't be like this. Don't let it fall back, catch at the bottom and momentum your way up. Look at this. Momentum your way through the motion. Kind of keep your back more stiff and upright. Let your shoulders open up. Close. Open up. Bam. Just concentrate on the feel. I know this sounds like some shit you hear people say. It sounds very cliche. But on this movement, guys, it is truly not about the weight, man. It's really about connecting with those fibers and squeezing. Notice I'm patrolling every rep. I'm milking every rep, okay? So uh, this is real good for the upper chest too. That's three really good upper chest movements that I really like, guys. Bam! So as you see, guys, upper chest, man. At the end of the day, if you're willing to put in the work, you will get the results. That's three 
great exercises that I stand by and I showed you how to do them. Be sure to go to the gym and if you really try them and you like them, tag me on Instagram and your stories, show me you putting in that work. I really love getting tags on Instagram. It actually motivates me too, man. It really makes me feel appreciated to see people doing shit that I taught them. That's why I became a trainer in the first place. You already know. PalmChasers.com. Get your summer vibes, you feel me? We got the restarts coming very soon, including the wrist wraps. You already know TigerFitness.com for pump chaser sups. And for high volume programs that really work, go to BeastMode316.com. And all my programs come with free video tutorials, so there's no excuses for bad form. As always, guys, thank you so much for your support, and we'll see you in the next video. Bam! Wait.